thank you all for coming tonight. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to listen and talk to the residents of the North End and hear your problems directly one on one. This is great. It's a great opportunity for you inside the room. Just a reminder that tonight's meeting is being videotaped, so if anyone has a, has a problem with it, uh, we'll shut the uh, we'll shut this recorder on, but we do uh, videotape the meetings. Um, we're going to get going in one second. I just want to say one thing. There was a, a, a newspaper article written in, in the Globe, and I said probably most people might have seen it. Um, I don't think it did justice to the neighborhood or to the efforts of the police are making on behalf of the neighborhood other than trying to control, control, control the noise issues in the neighborhood for all the life But I, that's my personal opinion, not as a police officer. My personal opinion. Um, I, I just think I felt that way. I wanted to share it. I don't think it's just done. It's actually done very well either. Uh, he's a hard working, dedicated police officer. His efforts aren't meant to be funny. Oh, and he's not, not being trying to be you know, numerous. He was out there doing his job. And, I didn't think that came across though. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. I, 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 not remember the press map, but <laughs> uh, I just didn't see that it was a, uh, I think the reporter might have thought it was like a numerous uh, situation. I don't find the new uh, people in the street. Just, if, just so for my end, there was 20 discrepancies in it of the U's, uh, how you doing. I mean, we spent three and a half hours. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah, Tony doesn't speak that way. That was, uh, it wasn't right to put that in there. Like, I think that we understood that. The ones that you know, yeah, so I think there was two ways of looking at it. If you were really, if you looked at it from a police perspective, it was just all the wrong things were said. Um, I do not want an apology. I love it. I'm a being here tonight and I particularly want to thank all of you who came to the hearing last Thursday night uh, and those who testified. It was uh, I think a good hearing. It's an ordinance that I filed in response to some of the complaints that we have here in the North End and not only the North End but other neighborhoods throughout the city of Boston. Uh, as you know we've been working for the last few years with the North End Beacon Hill Problem Property Task Force and we have some new members that join us uh, where we meet on uh, the third Tuesday at 8.45 at City Hall with Boston Police, uh, Suffolk University, Emerson, ISD, Council of Officers Office to address some of the issues that in the neighborhoods in regards to parties, loud noise. And we started that five years ago in response to the college students. And at that time, most of the problem, believe it or not, was at Beacon Hill. And believe it or not, it's more quiet at Beacon Hill than moving to the North End. And what we usually do, working in Sergeant Lear, we would hear the complaints and try to respond. And sometimes we would send letters to landlords and, uh, and make phone calls. Some landlords, not respond to us. Some of them were actually uh, kind of nasty when they would receive a letter uh, and did not help us. So I followed this ordinance open to hold the landlord responsible with some of the problems that we're having here in the North End. This ordinance will do, what this ordinance does is if a police 
gets a call that is a loud party, they will respond. Uh, they will give the police the authority to issue a fine to the party, not only to the tenant, but actually to whoever is at that party. At the same time, a letter will go to the landlord, from the landlord, that we responded to a loud party at your address. If we respond again, you will be subject to a fine. Um, this audit is not really to punish the landlord, it's to get them to work with us. We're hoping that in the lease, they will let the new tenants know. If you get a fine, we're going to take it from your security deposit. Maybe we can use that. But um, it's an audience that I think the police, um, we work with the police and, and they like it. It gives them an, an extra tool, an added tool to enforce some of the noise audits that we have in the city. Unfortunately, I think you have to hit them in the pocket. We've seen that with the green bill, where um, <coughs> we're issuing all these tickets with trash, when people put all their trash early, people who did not shovel in front of their houses and they weren't paying their tickets. Now we have something with the green bill that the landlord is responsible. So I think it's a good bill. We have another meeting on Monday, a working session with the police, uh, with some other city officials to see how we implement this new ones. And then the city council will vote on it probably on Wednesday or the week after. So I think it's a good audience. I'm looking forward to it. There are councilors. Uh, Ross was there, O'Malley, and uh, council president showed up. So it's an, it's an issue all over the city, not only in the North End, but all over the city. So I don't know if you have any questions about the ordinance, I'll be glad to try how, to answer. How, how's the fine going to be enforced? Because I know for the longest time those green tickets just yeah. went out and big deal, they got them, right. away. You know? That's why we're meeting on Monday to see how we enforce okay. it. I don't know. I mean, I like to, I don't know how we do it, to be honest with you. If the landlord is responsible, maybe it gets into their they have to pay it like we do with the green tickets. It goes on their taxes. Okay. So I don't know that. Yeah. Sal, I emailed Stephen today. Excuse me? I emailed Stephen today about okay. this particular subject I'm going to bring up. Yeah. When somebody gets a parking ticket yeah. and they don't pay it, they get summons to court. Am I correct? Well, the purpose is they won't be able to pay their licenses if you don't pay your tickets. So you know what? The registration. Oh, yeah. If we issue fines according to the same way they issue parking tickets, yeah. I feel will be more effective than none of us in this room know what's really going on <coughs> with these fines with the landlords. Yeah. So therefore, if you issue these tickets, and I'm even willing to say, in, in because I know the police job is going to be so much harder giving out these fines. Somebody comes in the neighborhood, they don't even have to live in the neighborhood, they have to issue a ticket. Who have to demand their driver's license, let's say, or some means of identification. <laughs> maybe, even though it may be incorrect, I think each policeman should <coughs> $25 off at each fine that they issue. Now, not, well, yeah, you want to know something? Yeah, because if they're looking to get policemen to monitor this whole neighborhood where there are restaurants, I think they deserve it because. We have a lot of jobs in the city to me that don't even warrant having a job. I'd rather give it to our policemen and our firemen because they are going, they're risking their lives in plain English. So therefore, I feel like if we have to give them $25 for each ticket they give out, guess what? It's worth it because they're going to deal with a lot of crap in this neighborhood. When they start, to, and I'll say it a million times, I don't care if I sound like a nag. The thoughts of throwing beer bottles off a roof at our policemen makes me sick to my stomach. And guess what? As far as I'm concerned, it was a slap on the hand. They could have went to court. They got away with it. That was it. They got away with it. So if they could do this to our policemen, what chance do we have? We have to, you people have to step up to the plate. You as a city councilor, this against the... The, the real estate taxes is not flying because we have the same problems with the trash that we've always had. These people don't care. But when you hit them in the pocket like a parking ticket, it's faster and more effective. I can tell you that 
because of this new bill, the great tickets, the landlords are responsible. They have it's in the bill. And this it's is in the real estate. Yeah, it's in the real estate. Yeah, you have to pay it doesn't matter. You don't get it. Yeah. They don't even know what's going on. But they, they have management coming to write all the checks. And listen, listen, we had to talk about fine, but if you're on a landlord, Yes, and I am. And you don't think that people could come in my building that get away with what's going on Thank in these you. buildings? Thank you. Never have. I live correct. here. And that's we're why cash landlords. cows. This real estate right. is cash cows. The right. absentee landlords. I respect your opinion. Yeah, and that's respect what. it. It's a fact. <laughs> See, now, this is a fact. Absentee landlords are the biggest problem down here because they don't even know who their tenants are. They own so much property, it don't matter. I they agree. won't like condemn buildings. So I don't think I'm going to stand with my audience does. The holders of them are responsible. And that's why we're doing this audience. And my thing is holding All the right. landlord responsible with the tenant immediately, not on quarterly taxes, Sal, right away. So they All fail. Right. All right, I hear you. Does anyone else have a question in regards to this audience? <laughs> Do you like this audience? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's a and does anybody All like right. my stop. audience no, better? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you for uh, taking the lead on the ordinance also. Thank you. With the on that. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to run through the statistics that we usually do at the start of the meeting. During this uh, last 38 time period, there were no homicides, there were no sexual assaults, there was one robbery. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, there was an arrest on that robbery. Uh, there was no aggravated assault, three breaking entries, one robbery. 11 uh, general larcenies, three larceny from motor vehicles, and one of those was an arrest also. Uh, no graffiti, two community disorders, eight towed vehicles, that's towed vehicles by the police. There were 112 uh, motor vehicle violations issued and 374 parking tickets. Now, I just wanted to go through uh, some of the arrests quickly and I'll have Kenny uh, do the rest of the report. But we did have uh, several arrests in the neighborhood during the last uh, 30 days. On October 13th at 3.37 in the morning, officers from uh, the North End responded to 600 Commercial Street, North Street Parking Garage, two white males breaking into vehicles. The officers uh, went in, took a look through, had a lengthy foot pursuit, and did place two suspects under arrest to recover property that they had stolen from the vehicles. So that was a good arrest by our, our morning watch program. Um, yeah. One was from... Um, yeah, the uh, one was from Fall River and one from Situa. One is 29, one is 24. Yeah. Fall River. Uh, yeah, came a long way for that. Um, on another great arrest on October 16th at 10 o'clock at night, Atlantic and Commercial, uh, police officer Mike Spence was doing a paid detail. He heard a 54-year-old uh, North End resident screaming for help. He went there, found a, uh, a male, had just uh, grabbed a purse. He went after the male, chased him down on foot, and did place the individual under arrest. So, uh, good job by Mike uh, and being out on the street. So, uh, he was 50 years old. He looked 30 years old, but he was 50 years old from Pine Street, homeless. Uh, the suspect. Uh, what time of day was this? At 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> On October 17th at 5 o'clock in the morning, the officers responded for a call for a break-in at 214 Hanover Street. Um, this is kind of an odd one, but uh, a woman had broken into the apartment trying to get away from uh, a meal that she was with. And she was hiding in the woman's closet inside the apartment. It was 5 in the morning. Uh, she listed her occupation. She was a 29 year old exotic dancer. Oh, oh, uh, oh, dancer. Dancer. oh dancer. Okay, I know you're going to say, why did break into my apartment? Go ahead, Sam. No, but I'm not sure what the circumstances were. I'm not going to on October 19th, 12, uh, 12, no, 2.09 a.m., the officers, including Rich Grillish from Suffolk University, who was riding with our, uh, our noise ordinance unit, responded to Charter Street. 
on uh, complaint of uh, people on the roof drinking. The offices found uh, several students, like five students, which on, on, that were uh, involved in this activity. They smelled of alcohol. One of the uh, students, one of the people was uh, refused to identify herself as a student. She wound up being uh, placed under arrest. She was found to be 17 years old. And in fact, uh, one of the female officers searched her and found her ID in her bra and then she was a Suffolk University student. So she initially lied that she was a uh, student playing to be from Florida. But she was one of our... Uh, she the, the, uh, well, the, the, it's, oh, she's going to go through the university <laughs> disciplinary process. So I'm not going to say what, what the action will be. And the other, uh, were the other ones also, Rich? Uh, they were told me there were Suffolk University students. Were the other you know, was, there were several. They were also okay. What, they, what, they would what, also go through the process, which I believe. Yeah. What number charter was it? Nice. The rooftop of number nine. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah. So it's about that or about us to do with them. It has no roof deck either. Yeah, no, it certainly doesn't. It should be up there. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That's the one that just got sold. Uh, yeah, that's right. The auction one. Oh, <coughs> did it just get sold? Yeah, it just got sold. There's a new landmark. There is a new landmark? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, you know, it's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's an issue with that building, too, on the apartment. But it was, uh, you know, again, just the noise card, that, you know, most of the Suffolk University was out there, did take the action, and uh, it was followed up on a day with the complaint. The store students are gone. They, are, they, they moved. Are they out of there? Moving yeah. they're gone. They're actually in 9A. It's like a double building. They are no longer living there. They, 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 they've been, they've moved on. They've moved on to excellent. I don't feel the people I also have good news. They can be able to. <laughs> on uh, October 24th at 11.25 in the morning, uh, Officer Billy Cullen, he's our day north end unit. Billy observed a, uh, a, a well-known uh, north end uh, resident who had been arrested several times for breaking and entering in larceny, coming out the back door of the Catalina, Catina Italiana restaurant, carrying a large bag. Uh, Billy went to stop to talk to him. He winds up fleeing down to Salem Street. Was placed under arrest. He went in and uh, stole a bunch of meat and stuff out of the freezer at the restaurant. But again, it was just a good job with Billy being out there. Yes, yes. No one in the neighborhood. So, so. Yes, you know, he's always out there patrols the area, <coughs> and he knows that uh, I don't want to say the suspect's name. The suspect for a moment, unfortunately, suffers from a, a, a drug problem. And every time that person is out and about, it's not his first time being arrested. He He's stealing stuff. Um, so what's the penalty? Well, yeah. You know, what's the penalty? Depends on what judge you go to. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, he needs to be placed in a drug treatment lockup until he gets sober or, or clean is what he needs to be and not just let that go. Um, you know, we don't decide on the uh, penalty. We don't pick the judges. They take the thing, but they do get to see their record before they they release them. No, I'm just I'm curious because it just keeps occurring. This person, what's to prevent them from doing it again? Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and we don't. And people that you know have drug problems don't just you know when they're out they're trying to break into your house or a car to get money. And that's what they do. It's again. Uh, I hope he, did, he doesn't get right back out, but I'm not sure if that he, he might say he did or not. We just know he does have to rest. Uh, do you want to talk about this one, Tommy? This is the restraining order, or, or hold that? Yeah, we'll hold that one. Uh, did you want to do the, that was the uh, end of the arrest. Well, there's one more. I'm going to have Tommy talk about it afterwards. The uh, robberies, the one robbery, was the one that Gavis spoke about the arrest for the handbag uh, stuff on the land again. That was, uh, that was on the 16th of October, and it was uh, 10 p.m. And we were in a commercial. We got a detail also before we made the arrest. The aggravated assault was uh, 296 Commercial Street in the open parking lot. And what happened was uh, individuals in a car didn't want to pay. So they drove through the gate, 
they uh, attended in front of them and they beat the attendant with the eye of the game. So uh, they fled. They, they uh, actually, it was uh, cameras. So the the they have the plate. Yeah, they have the plate. Well, you have the plate number. The velocities, the 13 velocities. The uh, first one was on the 5th of October, 745 a.m. <coughs> the um, time period, 7.45 a.m. Whether the victim reports the 51 stone had a bike stolen. Had quite a few bikes last couple of months so uh, walked up on the streets. And, uh, this one was a uh, seven hundred dollar King Cana Dale bike. Uh, 10 10 October, eleven AM, twelve PM, fifty five Cooper. Last thing in the building, the victim reports that uh, she had a package delivered and someone stole the package from this front street. The um, 1060 12 p.m. noontime, shoplifting, 12 fleet, and um, boutique. Had a um, leather handbag, a bracelet, um, assorted, uh, four assorted bracelets, and a cuff bracelet stolen from the store by a um, white stocky female right, that fled. On the um, 10th of the month, October 11 a.m., to 26 Stillman Street, last day over. Victim reports um, basically um, the family's the son's choice was stolen. The Legos worth $671. Uh, 1023 Commercial Street of Hanover. That was another last day of a bicycle. Right? It was a Fisher Cross bike, separate $700. And we lock her with it. Uh, the 21st of the month, last day in a building, 346 Hanover, 116 p.m. came in, and that was the arrest at a building for the uh, Cantina Italiana. Shoplifting, 346 Hanover. The, um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean that. The 25th of the month, last in the building, 57 Charter, 4.02 p.m. And it, uh, victim reports um, a pair of her angry yellow broker, rust colored boots worth $60 was stolen from the hallway. She left out the hallway. On the 26th of the month, last in the building, 54 Salem, 10 p.m. It was um, uh, <coughs> victim reports her pocketbook, uh, Apple MacBook, um, the personal papers were stolen. Uh, she left it next to her in a backpack right, inside of 54 Sandwich Street. And then we got the, um, oh, the first half, at Thatcher, North Washington Street, the victim was walking with two friends at uh, 12.36 in the morning. A individual on a bike came by and ripped the pocketbook from her hand. Flood on the bike towards Daniel Hall. Brought an iPhone, wallet, mass IDs, and, uh, and, and work, and another phone from work, and other iPhones she has from work. What the date was that? That was on the uh, October 28th, so, at uh, 12.36 in the morning. In the um, 10 30, last in the building, right, that was the um, 266 Commercial Street. And victim reports she's out with her friends at a bar room on Commercial Street, and someone stole her cell phone. And on the 31st, last in the building, again, this is the 12th Fleet. And it was the same individual come back to steal again and was caught. <laughs> this time tried to steal a uh, $58 watch and the individual was finally caught. So that'll wrap that up. Well, probably a few other, it's the same description that's been given out in the shop of the year.
the white female. Uh, last year building, 10, 10 11, 150 in Salem, and that was, um, Victory Ports' apartment was under foreclosure, and someone came in all right, and stole his property. All right, um, a laptop, iPhone, sound system, LCD TV, a vacuum cleaner, all his dishes, uh, his clothing, and his shoes. He said he was going to clear it out to leave. But, uh, Lastly, for motor vehicles, we had the three of them. First one was Atlantic Gavin Commercial on the 13th of the month at 3.37 a.m. And that was the uh, arrest made by the officers. And the, um, you see the, prop the property was quite a bit of property. Uh, there's um, sporting goods, sweatshirts, um, camcorders, cameras, GPS, camcorder system, cell phones, his bank book, uh, school property, and, uh, and all of his um, personal papers. <laughs> the next one was on, at, on 10 12 on 10 Commercial Walk. And that was um, at 10 p.m. Lost the motor vehicle, and the victim had a, uh, his window, rear window smashed and his football helmet was stolen from the uh, vehicle with $150. And the third one was on the 21st, 600 Commercial Street, the garage. The victim reports his um, Callaway golf clubs were stolen from the uh, back of the car. And the auto theft, we had the one victim reports he parked it on Commercial Street by Foster on the 29th. He went out at 4.15 p.m. that afternoon and the car was gone. And it was actually stolen and recovered in Rock Street. Uh, there's one more uh, arrest that I wanted to mention. Uh, Sorry, did, did, not to interrupt, just wondering, on, on the stolen car, was it locked, do you know? He started it with Mike Ross. So that was a big thing where we brought together North End residents 
ISD was a big thing in the Beacon Hill residence. It's still going. And then out of that, through all of the, you know, basically the complaint calls from the North End, that's where it was thought of going to all of our meetings, was how do we loop in the landlords? And so I, I truly believe in the ordinance. Again, first time out, you'll get a warning. Second time out, it's a $100 fine. Each and every time after that, in the course of a, a one-year period, it's a $300 fine. So again, but it, it, it's a start because it holds the landlords accountable uh, for how they manage their properties. So uh, three of the properties, I'll just mention really briefly, 28 Fleet Street, we got a call, I think, for almost 100 kids that were in a particular place. I'm not gonna get into the landlords right now, but the bottom line with that is both of them were evicted right after that party. That was uh, within the last 30 days. Um, 139 Fulton Street, uh, I went down there. Uh, the woman was 31 years old, lived in the North End, eight years, had a birthday party, and for this meeting said, you just give me some names and addresses. I'll send out a letter and I'll apologize. She'll never have a party down there ever again. And she apologizes on behalf of her boyfriend for having that party. Uh, what was the other one I want to mention? Unity Street, I got called. Wait, excuse me, go back to 139? Yep. Please? Yep. Two weeks later, they had another party. And she, <laughs> on that one, she said she didn't, but uh, she'll send out a letter, she'll sign it, and she'll send it up to the group that they won't have a party. But she did, I got her name and everything. 31 year old. 31 year old birthday party, she'll send out a letter. If anyone wants to give me an address, she'll personally apologize to anybody in the neighborhood. I don't know how old you well, again, she, again, again she had the party and she said that she wasn't going to have any more parties. All right, can I ask you something? Uh, that night, they were ready to go on all night because they were looking to order food. I heard them on the sidewalk. The police came down, they looked on the left side of the street, which is the even side of the street. They didn't see 139. They drove away. You know, those more officers run over time. They don't work in the North End. But I'm going to tell you something. And they also, the car that should have got it didn't get it, which was the noise ordinance car. Six calls. I, I know it was there. I know it was there. But I'm telling you what happened, which I'll be really And then. Yeah, hold on yeah. real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we responded to that call. It was myself and Officer Gava and uh, Mark Lowen. And we ended it right there. We identified the. A birthday girl and the boyfriend. We actually have a lot of bodies. We'll Somebody on. went upstairs, right? Yeah, all three okay. of us went upstairs. Could, could I ask you how many people were at that premises? I would say at least 40. 40 we have. 40 of you? I'll make sure you should do Okay, but I make that. You know they were outside in the back deck? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to get to the other point. She apologized. She'll send a letter. That, well, I think that's very important because she, she got a young professional. Know who I was. 31 years old. It wasn't going to be a call. I didn't give up that information. I didn't know who reported her. Elizabeth Hilton, that old also, also told me that. I said, I don't want any apology. Right. I want it not to happen again. Meanwhile, two weeks later, on the Saturday night, it happens again. And somebody called, and I don't know what Well, I'll, I'll be back down there again for that. Do we have a call again? Okay, so at 1, 3, 6, and 7, uh, Unity Street, really brief on this one. Uh, Number six, the guy's from New York, lives there with his wife. He's lived in the North End. His quote was, I love the North End. I'll never leave the North End. It's a beautiful place. We have no children. Maybe when I have children, I'll move out. But right now, I love it. I said, well, geez, we're getting a lot of complaints for number six. Well, sometimes the stereo is loud. I've lived here for eight years. I have no complaints. Now, the complaints I got were loud parties at six. Number one, went up to the fourth floor, two young professionals, and they both said, yeah, we did have a party. We had 12 guys up here. We told the guys when they left to not mingle in front of the building. They did. We knew the police were called, we apologized. Asked a couple of people in the other floors, they didn't know anything about it. Went over to five, uh, five, uh, the two guys that were causing the problem have already moved out, and number three, uh, I didn't really get too many complaints at all from there. Moving on, 139 Unity, 28 Fleet was taken care of, 121 Salem Street, that is being addressed. That was kind of another big party we had down there. The building management has been notified. They are taking some sort of action. They haven't gotten back to us on that as of yet. We also, now we just started a new partnership, the North End Patch. We have a brand new reporter from the Patch. They want to do what they do, I guess, in Charlestown and up in Beacon Hill. You can actually, it's like another online uh, type of uh, reporting service for the neighborhood. And again, we'd like to thank Phil and uh, Matt for all the coverage that they give us uh, in their uh, media coverage uh, for us. Uh, seven, Cafe Pompey went back down there and spoke to them again. Uh, they haven't made a decision whether or not they're going to hire a police team until again. We've talked about this being open until 4 o'clock in the morning does affect everybody in here's quality of life. Again, my, my time out on the walk along 
the two big things I noticed with the amount of people that are out in the street between, say, 1 and 2.30, and they are coming back to the North End. They are young professionals. They were not college kids at that hour of the morning, and they do live in the North End. But again, if you have two places that are open till 4 o'clock in the morning, or if they just open late, it, it causes them to linger up and around Hanover Street before they head home, and it also becomes a destination point for other people, just as in Chinatown, that want to come down into the Chinatown and get Chinese food. So again, uh, we're still waiting on that. Uh, you know, again, we can't close them down at this point, but if anything, we'd love to see them hire a police detail because we do. Bovis does have a detail, and I was on Friday night, and I was out late, and Sergeant Earl was in the street making sure they kept, kept their voices down. But it's like Tommy said, we do have attractions where people are going to come just to get something to eat before they go home or whatever. That's that's an issue. But Bovis does have a detail, and Jimmy Earl was out there Friday night. I was out there, and. He, has a situation under control. Okay, and back now on the loud party calls for the last 30 days for the entire month, we had 22 loud party calls, which is up, so it's, it might be a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing are they partying more, or maybe I'd like to think the people in the North End are calling 911 more. Well, they only had one repeat address, and that was on, uh, that was Fulton Street. It wasn't 139, but the first call turned out not to be legit. The second call, we did uh, handle a loud party. Three, we had three disturbance calls. Two drunk type calls and two investigate premises. Um, last note, uh, Bobby Luongo, who's our senior response officer, just give you a quick feel for what he does with the elderly in the North End. We've had an ongoing case of harassment uh, uh, of one senior with another senior. Uh, we've been responding quite a bit. We've had uh, the, uh, EMS involved in it. Uh, we've been to court on it a few times. I'm not too sure how many people might be aware of it, but. Uh, one of the things that we also handle beyond youth and just having a liaison for the North End is covering the elderly. Uh, this given matter, it's a bunch of elderly that, uh, believe it or not, aren't getting along right now. A lot of cross complaints have been filed and uh, we're dealing with that right well, now. One of the people had some issues though. What's, the address? Address? Yeah. What's that? Where were they live? Where did they live? Uh, we'll say in the vicinity of Michael Angel. <laughs> 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 well, one of the people we don't like to place somebody under arrest we were trying to bring them before the court to get some help. Yeah, just with respect to the noise complaints, I just wanted to uh, let people in the meeting know uh, <clears throat> we and, and some other people uh, called in a complaint about a love, love party on Sunday night uh, at 416 Hanover, 416 Hanover, Unit 3. And uh, <clears throat> I, we weren't in town the weekend before, but my, our neighbors told us that they had also had to call the police about 416 Hanover, Unit 3 the weekend before. So I think actually there are two, at least two res uh, two addresses to which, which have repeat offenses or whatever you call it. I did look that up, but we only have that one, and the one that we had called in was on the 29th that that was yours. What address did you say about? It was 416. It's above the laundromat. And and I went and talked to Sam there, and he said that they've got brand new tenants. The, the worrisome thing, and I talked to the, the tenant above, the condo owner above, Michael Biano, who was, who was also very good, uh, but the worrisome thing is that people are saying that they're holding raves there and that they're charging admission for these raves. Oh, I mean, I personally haven't seen anything of, that's right next door to my house, I'm at 406. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything, I'm, I mean, I'm up late. I have yeah. work nights and I don't go to bed until 3 30 in the morning, to be honest with you, but I can, um, I'll talk to. One of the condo owners who yeah. the laundry. I can, I, I'm, be, there, I'm probably going there tomorrow to pick up my dry clean to be honest with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would be helpful. Now, I said, I, I don't have proof that that's what's happening, but I've heard people I'll in the neighborhood saying, I'll keep an eye on Stephen's going to buy a ticket to get the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep an eye on it. Ain't been looking for a radio. I'll send your name to And again, on a note on that, since the beginning of the year, well, that's the only time we've been to 416 that I have down here is a lot of party, but. I'm going to turn this part over to Richie and Green, let's just to address that. Um, we are planning on visiting that address tonight and we'll identify who the tenants are. I, I have a strong suspicion that they're going to be my students, so I'll speak with them about what's going on. Um, I'm not going to wait until Saturday night when they start charging admission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlicensed parties is a serious violation and it would be uh, brought up to court for that. There's a separate one. Yeah. Yeah. There is a separate one. Let's go turn out that's the case. I have a question.
question for you. Um, what is the process of when something is called to the police in getting that information to Suffolk? Um, usually right there and they hand me the list of names of students. And then I turn so them only on. if you're Let's there? Say you're not yeah, there. what if you're not there? Um, I get a call the next morning typically from somebody in the community service office. They tell me that there's been an incident reported. It doesn't have to be on the weekend. It could be yeah, it's a Wednesday night. Yeah, it could be Wednesday. something that happens during the day. Someone will either call me at the office or they'll ask me to come down to the station and I'll pick up the information and then I'll create a report for the Dean of Student Affairs and that gets submitted and they start the process, you know, within a few hours of me handing in a report, they've already contacted the students and told them that they're in the judicial process and need to respond. Okay. Did you have an issue with the students? Yeah, yeah, 79 yeah. Prince Street. 79 Prince Street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it not, not on one of the nights? It was a Wednesday night. Did it involve, did it involve was something? There yes. Was a it issue, did. But it was system. involved yeah. very disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. We, started, we started the process the next day. I got Great. called and, and I found out about it and yeah. investigated. So awesome. I don't think there'll be a problem in and again, if there's any, if there's those unknown questions, you know, three four three four six two seven, that's our number. Just make sure that you call us between myself and Teddy. You know, we'll get the ball rolling on that. If we're not going down there, we're talking to Richie. We'll find out what happened on the midnight shift. We'll go through the database nine one one calls. Yeah. Sifting through the reports to see if anything in fact did come about. Great. Thank you. Good I don't know if this has been reported. I live at 90 Salem Street. And this hasn't happened to me yet, but a lot of packages have been missing out of our building. UPS packages, and I don't know if it's happening to anybody else in the neighborhood. We did have a larceny, uh, similar larceny, at least one similar larceny reported within the last 30 days and on a package. And it's ha this is the time of year this always happens. Yeah. Coming up to the holidays, because mm -hmm. people are getting gifts and things and, you know, through the mail and through UPS. So. So, you know, this happens quite a bit in Charlestown, too. You know, if, if, if you don't feel safe if the package is delivered and the door, have the package delivered to a friend or a relative where you know that home, they take it in and go pick it up that way because it can't happen. Yes, if they're allowed to leave the package, that's the door. I was just wondering if maybe the detail clock, if he sees people walking around with packages and the same person all the time, then, oh, you yeah. know, like if you knew the person that was doing the robberies around and all yeah. that. And the other, one other thing I wanted to say, I haven't been able to get to some of these meetings, but at St. Anthony's Feast, I just want to commend you on a great job that you did. Um, police officers were everywhere. People were broken up, uh, kids. And I just want to let you know that I thought you did a great job during St. Anthony's Feast in keeping the, the crowd controls and the, the problems down a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Six one seven. Three four three four six two seven. Um, I just wanted to know. Last month when I was here, I mentioned about sixty four Prince Street, about how um, the girl on the second floor has some really wild parties all the time. I don't know if they're from Suffolk or where they are, but they're young. You already check them. You check it every night. It's on the list. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they, are they yeah. substitutes? Of, uh, yeah. That was the question we didn't have because yeah. we haven't actually got to go in yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is wide open. I just wanted to make sure because, yeah. like, last the, week. Door, they, the door to the building is wide open because we went down there. We went down there. And we walked right up. Right at the end of the last right up and right in. Right in. Because the door is wide open. Yeah, one down. The bottom door. We didn't go in the house. I got you. I got you. I got you. You might have liked it when you have a little red up. But we went down and we were right up there. We did. That was us. Okay, I just wanted to check because um, they kind of started partying a whole bunch last weekend again. Did you, did you call on them? I didn't call because then they all of a sudden, like, I don't know what happened, but 50 kids came running out of the building. And then that was it. Is there it. any way to secure that bottom door? Or is it always like that? Open? It's usually always open. Yeah. That's um, the tailor on that building. Yeah. That's on Salem Street. You will go out of because you can just go right up right in if they work. Yeah. You know, you don't need to get punched in. All right. Okay. This is for Sal. Sal, honey, is there any chance we can have some cameras put around the city on the trouble spots? Um. Are they there already? We, don't, we, don't have we had some Homeland Security cameras. That might be what we're referring to, but um, that grant program, I believe, is, is, is dried up the money, and we're not getting any, any, any new Homeland Security. I think <clears throat> what the justification was for those was Homeland Security uh, funds that were available under, under a grant, and we did put cameras in some locations. 
I don't think we have any uh, down in the neighborhood um, that I know of. If if we have we have we have the capability of putting up like a small portable camera from the drug unit and things like that. If there's a, a drug location, but that's really the only you know technology that the camera that we have. What if we get our own filming? Would you guys be able to use that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. We can. Yes. Yeah. We can as long as, long as it's not taken illegally. But if somebody's out in view and doing whatever they're doing, you're free to do it. In public, you're free to film them. And we're, we're free to use that. So that's the point today. Yes. Um, Sergeant Lehman had told me that if I. Um, what did Trinity have okay. told me? He's not looking at me. <laughs> I don't even want to let this. Well, he told me I wanted to put a sign on my building that this area is filled by cameras. And he said. If someone should get attacked or something, we could possibly get sued. No, oh, well, well, I think the big thing is you don't want to put out dummy cameras, number yeah. one, for that false security. Oh, I have a dummy security. camera. Why don't they build? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a dummy there, there are people that have cameras out there, I mean, again, so it's not, you don't want to have anybody in your neighborhood as neighbors thinking that somebody is actually watching that camera. We have a lot of cameras throughout the city where they are filming, but there's actually no, there's nobody on the other side who are watching all these monitors. In other parts of the city, if we have a bad thing that happens, maybe a shooting or something, we can go back into those cameras. Maybe we can pick up a license plate, bring up a photo image to be able to identify that person. But we can't always say that we have people watching those cameras at that minute of that morning. No, just like no, she I was on her own. in Cambridge, they have them on their buildings. This area is Yeah, so like, yeah you, can put, you can put that on your building. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. could do that, and you can put a camera on your own building. If someone should get attacked, yeah. it yeah. feel safe. Can, they would feel safe and they could possibly sue us. No, I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. Sure. I don't know. If you put it on a camera. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, these cameras are all over the place. These cameras are all over the place. These cameras are all over the place. These cameras are all over the for your tenants, you have to make sure that the cameras do what they work and they're not dummy cameras. That's what I'm saying. You can put cameras out there. You're not, cameras. You're not, you're not there to assure your tenants that the cameras work. Helpful, giving me the numbers to call the 911 and then to call because now being over because I'm at 33 Charter and being right there at Charter and Henchman, there's so much activity that goes on right there. It's really a high traffic area, there's a lot of parties and stuff. And by calling, it, it's, it's helping out tremendously. So, thank you. And, and welcome to the neighborhood. And thank yeah, you yeah. for coming again to the neighborhood. I know, you know, I have to go to work, so it's not that I'm being rude, but I'm looking at the clock. I have to be uh, okay, so. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What did Chucky give you? The, you know, yeah, I mean, I've been looking for him for a week. I hear he's in London. <laughs> I know, he told me. But no, it was one of these two numbers that I called. Well, what number did you call? Uh, 4240? Yeah, that's the station. That's District 1. And? That wasn't the right number to call. It, it not, no, really not. Call it 911. Call 911. That, 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 that number, you can call that number, call that number if, if you're questioning like why the car isn't there yet and ask the sergeant. Not the guy who just answered the phone, the police officer. He should tell you. Don't tell me that. I've got six different operators. They gave me their number at the time. I know. They give you, they're in a different, I know. 911, that's their operator numbers. Yeah. They give you an operator number. I'm still not saying that that's what happened. I know each of these, first of all, how come 
this gentleman had go down the 31 year old people mm -hmm. in each of their Oh no, he's, he's, with, the he's with the police. He, he rides with our in our unit with our police. <laughs> he goes to all the calls that the police car goes to. Oh, any no, call. Yeah, because they don't know when they get the call if they don't know. Right. And then this is Mayor Richard to find out. I know you're frustrated. On I am. I know you I are. Am. I'm not well, we're going to see we're sticking with that address, and we're not going away from it. So like we're going to walk away from that address. If, if it's again happening, we're going to go. But we can give them a fine now. Later. We have her information. So even if she doesn't okay, apologize or does whatever, we can still go back to find her now. We gave her one here. Forget about the first night. Yeah. This past Saturday night at 2:30, a call was made again. To the same address. And no, as far as I know, no one came. Okay, so yeah. That's the other. That was a different. Yeah. What? Why? Why is he down there? I call all the time, and they said it's not important. So I don't care if it's not important. Well, that's what they tell you. Well, they shouldn't say it's, it's not important. The quality shouldn't say it's not important. Well, they do. It's not an emergency. I think they say that. Well, we're told to call. Right. 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 I had a long conversation with her. She insisted that she did not have a party since that party that she had for her birthday. And again, oh she's more than willing to have a Do you think that people stay up until 2 30 in the morning waiting for some noise to be coming? No. Just I'm, I'm just saying, I had a 45 minute conversation with her, and I'm just saying from here on, if you have a call to that address ever again from this day on, I'd be shocked. But it already had to be certain. That's just what I said. I'm sorry. Uh, again, was it the same apartment? Again, was it the same apartment? Was it the same apartment? Yeah. I, I thought you said that you got that information from another party on that, on that call. My daughter. Okay. I mean, did I have to say it? You're not just asking. Okay. She's in that building, right? Yeah. Oh, no. It's not my building. So she's in the process. She's right. She said she could fill the walls like shaking. I'm sorry, I'm not happy. Go on with the meeting because I don't even know why you're here. You want to know something? You're absolutely right. Sal, this is why I say, and no disrespect for the police or you, believe me, I speak from my heart. If you don't issue these fines like parking tickets, we're screwed in plain English. You have to do it like that because this will go on and on forever, like the trash situation. The same violators put the trash out. They don't they care. And the same violators will do the noise and the parties and everything. This and our policemen definitely and our firemen deserve more money than any workers in the city because they risk their lives and do for us what no one else does. I'm sorry, and I'm not kissing their ass or their ass. I'm saying it the way it is. Let's put the money where it belongs for the people that are risking their lives for our, for our lives and our homes. I have to say I am very pleased with the police response. Since uh, the captain Lee has been on course, I have no problem with one thing. What's Mr. Prince Street address? Oh, the, uh, the two houses on Prince Street? They got evicted. I have no problem with the back, the rear of Maria, which has in trouble with the front door. Oh, yeah, 183 and the back street. I have no now problem with that. They already evicted <laughs> friends of their kids, and they're friends of my kids. But they got evicted, so I have to say, Captain, you're doing a good job. Yes. I believe you're doing a good job. It's getting there. Okay, you have to cheat on the job. I'm not sure what I'm doing. 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 I'm